Hi and welcome back to my um, coloring collection. This is part two. Um, uh, in part one I showed you all my color pencils so you know I'm going to link this up here. Please go back if you want to um, watch this and haven't yet. Also if you haven't watched the other one um, I have to reiterate my apology for me sounding um, all stuffy and for any sneezing and coughing and sniffling you might have uh, here because I'm pretty sick uh, today. So let's get right in. Um, I want to continue with my um, aquarelle and watercolor mediums. First up in another um, pencil case are my Inktense pencils and I really love these. Um, sometimes I just, you know, want to do something else and not do colored pencil. And um, if you have seen Peter Hewitt's work um, with um, in, in Lizzie Mary Cullen's books, then you've seen that she um, colors in there with ink tents or water-based pencils exclusively. And um, I've started doing that too. And I've also tried out to do a base with the ink tents and then coloring over it with water, um, colored pencils, with, which also works super good. I have the full set, as you can see, again with the little barcodes here. I got a smaller set first and then got the other pencils open stock. And um, the pencils might look like they haven't been used much, but that's just because they're super um, economical. Even, you know, the, just a just a small bit goes a long way. So I've actually used these quite a lot. They, they were among the first pencils um, that I've got four years ago. Um, um, this is the 72 set. They only come in 72 colors. But since they're um, like water-based, you can just mix them together. And the... Um, thing that's special about the ink tense pencils is that they're ink based and not um, aquarelle so um, they bec uh, become very bright when activated with water and when you activate them after they've dried they're not water soluble anymore um, which makes them very very unique they're the only pencils that I know of that do do it like that really really like them can recommend them if you are interested in um, doing some water based work and um, I've, I've never been one for watercolor I don't know maybe you know um, in schools here you have to paint a lot with watercolor and it never you know I never liked it which might also be because the watercolor you use in school aren't really of good quality so um, but with pencils I, I feel way more comfortable so those are my ink tents the 72 cent Then um, I have this Faber Castell Albrecht Dürer 48 set. And um, the Albrecht Dürer is the artist grade um, aquarelle line, so water soluble um, pencils of Faber Castell. And um, I've had this set since I think the early 90s. That's when I got this. Because um, as a kid, for, 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 for some time, I was really into um, aquarelle coloring. So this is a very, very old set that when I got back into coloring found um, in the storage of my parents. Uh, that's why it's very, very banged up. But, you know, for being uh, almost 30 years old, you know, it's been pretty good shape. Um, I'm pretty sure this one... Uh, might be, you know, huh, broken or something. That's why it's so short, not because I, uh, I love red so much. Um, it had um, two brushes in here, apparently one got lost. And um, it also miss, uh, it was missing two, um, two colors that I s I've since replaced. And this 48 set, because it's so old, it has some, co some colors in that don't exist anymore, like um, this light blue. 147, I don't think you can read it. I don't think I can make it focus. Well, just trust me, it's like blue 147. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, and some, and then 
this set also has silver and gold, which if you get a 48 set of Albrecht Dürer's Dürer today aren't included, luckily, because why would you why would you need them? I don't even think they look very metallic. Um, but this is this is a really wonderful set. Um, and I'm so glad that, you know, my, my parents kept it and that I could just, you know, get it now. And um, of course, the pencils work just as fine as they did when I first got the set. I think this is the wonderful thing about this hobby. This just keeps. This, I, I have a tendency, sometimes I just um, lose interest in my hobbies for years and years, but I always come back as seen. And with this hobby, you can just come back and all your mediums are just waiting for you to be used. So this is the 48 set of the Albrecht Dürer. I almost forgot about um, showing you um, this wonderful little set. I got this um, for Christmas from my mother. Um, and this is a 24 set of Holbein artist colored pencils. And um, yes, those pencils are really just as good as um, people will tell you. And I really, really love them. But of course, um, if you have to import the pencils from Japan, then they're extremely expensive um, to get. Um, I'm still having my eye on, on the pastel set they have. And maybe I'll get that, you know, sometime in the future. But um, if you can't replace the pencils, and, and I think it's very hard to... I mean, they are sold open stock in Japan, but I think it's pretty hard to get them open stock outside of Japan. Then, I don't know, you'd have to replace the whole set if you ran out of one or two colors, and that's too expensive. And I'm very happy with all the other um, sets that I have. I don't need more pencils, but those are really, really gorgeous and wonderful, and I love this little set that I have. I think the biggest set is um, 160, I want to say, and they have a set of 50 pastels, which is wonderful. Then don't be fooled by the Ateza box. This is where I store my Neocolor 2 um, and the Sakura Koi brush pens in. Um, pa uh, Karen Dash has a very strange thing that if you... That usually, you know, the price per pencil in a set is uh, always cheaper than if you get them open stock. And the bigger the set, the lower the price per pencil is. But with Karen Dash, that's not true for the biggest sets, especially for the Neo color. The price per pencil is cheapest for the 30 set and then goes up. So um, what I did was get um, the 30 set of the Neo color. And since then, you know, from time to time, I just get one or two, um, one or two extra colors whenever I feel like it. And um, I put the, these in this box because um, that's that's better storage than just having flying them around um, like I did before. And I really like those um, for backgrounds. They're basically um, crayons and like other um, water Based pen or water color pencils, you activate them with water and they dissolve very, very nicely. You have to be careful, it has to be the Neo Color 2 because the Neo Color 1, as far as I know, aren't water soluble but oil based. And again, these look like I haven't used them at all, but um, I've actually used them quite a bit and they're very, very economical and very, you know, because there's no, there's no wood around them, it's all just pencil. You have a little. Um, paper here that you can remove and this is the Sahara yellow that I've used a lot for for backgrounds and you can see it just you know it's, it's barely anything gone off I really like those um, really do for backgrounds because I mean it's so easy to do a background with them just take one or two new color and then just you know be careful with the water when activating them but but basically 
you can get a very nice easy background with them. <coughs> <coughs> There's a new color fluo. I got them free with some purchase. Uh, I don't think they're water soluble. I actually don't know. I have never used them because they're also ne uh, neon colored, so not really you know usable for my paintings. Then I have a couple of open stock um, Sakura Koi brush pens. I just got them very recently and haven't um, used them much. They're water-based um, brush pens. And you can um, use them and then basically um, use a, a, um, a brush with water and mix them and dissolve them a bit more. But I found that this is really dependent on the paper. It has to be basically watercolor paper, otherwise the paper will start pilling very quickly or just you know sucking up the color and you won't be able to dissolve it anymore. Um, yeah, I need to play around with those a bit more, but um, in theory I like these um, water-based ink ones more than um, the, the watercolor pencils, because with the watercolor pencils it's very often that you leave um, that um, you won't be able to dissolve all the pigment and it just leaves streaks behind. And I just got, you know, um, a couple that aren't in the 24 set. They have 48, uh, a range of 48 colors um, all in all. And um, just in case, you know, I, I like them enough then I can just get the 24 set and then I'll have a full set minus the grays. And they're in here too because it's kind of all watercolor, right? just, you know, ignore the cat on the table. The last um, watercolor um, that I have are my, is my Coliro um, collection. I have a lot of the Coliro pearl colors. Again, um, you can buy them in sets of six, like these. Um, but you can also um, buy them in, in pans open stock and um, you can also buy the um, palettes and then just sort them in like you want to. So I just, you know, got a couple of um, single pans here and there. Um, I think I have two thirds of all the colors they, they sell by this point and um, I really really like them. I really would like to know where my swatch book is because then I could actually show you the swatches. Um, this is the galaxy set that they came out with and these colors aren't yet available as single pants you just you the only way you can get them is in this galaxy set. And um, I really like the colors you can get with this. I just like the, the idea that you have a whole galaxy of colors in one pan. Then these are um, my metallics. This way. I uh, mainly got into Coliros for their golden golden colors. They have very, very opaque golds in very different hues. And they also have a very nice silver, bronze, rose gold. Uh, and this is a little freebie I got. This is um, sterling silver. I already had that in big, so keep the little one here.
and those are just their opaque colored colors they all shimmer maybe you can see it in the pan very 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 pretty and um, these are pretty unique in that they will if you use them they will look different on paper than they look in the pan um, Colero um, advertises those colors to be used on black paper because on black they um, start changing the color I don't think I can catch catch it um, they're basically translucent all of them um, except for those three but the others um, um, when you put them on white paper they're translucent but if you then move the paper in the light they shimmer like green pearl starts looking green um, this p this will look pink this will look blue um, this will look like lilac this like copper um, this is just um, shimmer and um, these three mermaid unicorn and sphinx they will look one color and if you then move it they will start looking another color in the light like mermaid is this um, <coughs> rose color but will if you move it look start looking like ah can you see like teal unicorn um, is this very pink gold color and will look green and sphinx will also turn green I'm pretty sure um, this lagoon I didn't have any more space in here it's opaque colored um, so I've, uh, as I said I've, for the longest time I thought you could only use those on black paper because only then would you get their, um, their effect but that's not true because even on white paper when you change the angle you look at you, you can catch them and especially the translucent ones I found that you can get super cool effects on in coloring books because you can just layer them on top of um, colored pencil and when you then change the angle you look at it starts to shimmer it's super nice for fairy wings so this is my um, colero pearl color collection And that's basically it for for water-based um, mediums. I'm not big into into watercolor, as I said, um, but it's something I, I I have a feeling that it will brush um, brunch out in um, because it's one of the fields that I haven't explored yet. Um, then, back when I started coloring and didn't yet know what I would like, I um started with colored pencil as I showed you but I also got a lot of felt tip pens um, there's a Faber Castell um, connector pens and I think they're for children they connect oop, like this and I think they're water-based felt tip markers um, I've shown you a couple of pictures that I did with them and I I didn't like how it turned out so I haven't used them much but um, maybe if I, I actually get a mandala book that I don't own then these can be very nice to just you know relax and color I also got um, the 20 set of the triplus color the Stadler triplus color um, also felted pens can see they're basically the same as the Faber Castell also haven't used them much and then in this pencil case I got my Stadler um, triplus fine liners again I don't use these much um, and I might have lost a couple. I th think maybe it was only a 30 set. I know there's uh, a blue neon missing. I used to have them um, um, store them in, in a cup and 
yeah, then the cat had the brilliant idea that she wanted to play catch with the pencils and then they dropped down and spilled everywhere and I'm pretty sure I lost a couple when that happened. Then I got two sets of acrylic paint. Um, this is from just from a dollar store um, and these are the Xenocolor 24 acrylic paint set. Um, I got these because I wanted to try out uh, backgrounds with acrylic paint, but I haven't yet had the courage to try. Um, I actually, this set I got back, you know, years and years back when I was into um, um, nail art, because you can also use acrylic paint to paint on nails. Um, and so this is a couple of years old, but the the white that has been opened um, is still still good to use. So. At some point, I think. I will try. While we're talking about backgrounds, uh, let's go over to the pastels. Um, I use pastels a lot for backgrounds. This is the Faber Castell um, soft pastel set, the 48 set. I think there's a bigger set out there too, of 72, I think. But the 48 um, has been fine for me so far. They look like this. Very tiny sticks. And again, they look like I haven't used them, but I actually um, have used them quite a bit, depending on the color. So this is um, the box of my first set of Prismacolors, the 132 set. And I'm using it now to store my pen pastel collection. You also can, you can put them in a little plastic, <coughs> sorry, plastic tray. But I don't have that because it's always sold out whenever I buy new pen pastels. So um, I have them all just on your on their own. Oh, aren't they pretty? The pen pastels again, I just get one or two here and there whenever I um, feel like it. And at this point, I think I have a pretty broad selection. Um, of different different pastels. Um, what I really enjoyed and haven't used yet, but I really want to is this one. It's light gold and it's really, really pretty. I, I bet it looks, will look so good as a background. Yeah, I... These you can, you can just, you know, um, screw them together in this little tower, but then you don't know which which color is where. <laughs> but I think I got these like this, so I don't have um, tops. Um, Yeah, it's not the not the perfect storage solution. Like. Then this box um, doesn't house biscuits, even though they were very good. I, I you know, but it has um, all the applicators I have for the pen pastels or pastels in general. But um, like the first set of pen pastels I bought came with these applicators. Like this, um, but yeah, you can just use like makeup sponges. So this is what's in here, and then we get to this huge, enormous bag. Um, I saw this on Colour and Chat with Sammy, and this is just the most wonderful storage for markers. It's huge. I can't even fit it under the camera properly. And it opens up in the front. And then it opens up to so you have access to all the markers you have stored in there. So this is my marker collection. Um, I have some 
a Spectrum Noir markers. Um, and this is the pastel set. I only have the pastel set. Then I have some style file markers. And these um, are very, very comparable. Oh, very comparable to Copics and a bit cheaper. They have a brush nib in the front and a chisel nib. And um, you can get replacement for the nibs and you can get refill ink for them. And um, I've, I haven't seen them much. Um, maybe it's because it's a German brand. I really want to do a, a video about them because um, yeah, I really like them and decided that instead of getting Copics that are very, very expensive, I would just get um, these. I think they're um, three euro fifty per pencil, so it's not that much cheaper than a Copic Char, but um, significantly cheaper than a than a, one of the bigger Copics, and I really like their colors. And then I, um, for Christmas, I got a set of Copic Copic Charles. Um, I'm sure you. You've seen them, they have a brush tip and a chisel nib. And the problem is that the, the colors in the set aren't really... Hmm. So with colored pencils, you always need a, a light and a darker one to, to shade. And that um, set that I have that doesn't really give that. But in combination with all the other markers I have, I, I feel um, I have a good selection and I um, really like using them as a base um, before going over with colored pencils. I, this really cuts down on um, a lot of time and makes the colors brighter and it's really just such a good idea and I have a couple of skin tones to really help with coloring skin. So this is something I enjoy very much at the moment. And I can really recommend, if you have markers, recommend this bag, it's just so good. It still has a bit of room for a couple more. <laughs> then we get to um, my assorted, just various um, other tiny things. I have some glitter glues. Um, I really want to get some stickles, but I haven't found out to where to to get it so um before last christmas i just went out in an art store or a craft store and just got this like no name glitter this even says german glitter for whatever reason <laughs> um I, I think um stickles are, are denser than this but this is uh, this has been pretty okay at least for the christmas pictures i did this was this was okay still want to get some stickles though and then i have some assorted brushes oh the cat was laying on the last one um i prefer using um like water brushes but these are pretty good too they're just you know cheap and those i got for when i was into color by numbers but yeah cheap brushes for whatever you need them for then I got Fixative. I use this on almost all pages because um, I want to prevent the color rubbing off on the other side when you color in the coloring book. Um, through the pressure it will happen that the color will um, rub off. And if you put Fixative on it then it prevents that. And if you use pastels then you have to use a Fixative because otherwise the color isn't set. Um, and it says here that it's for pastel, um, chalk, <coughs> sorry, coal, um, charcoal and, and color pencil. And when you get a, a fixative, you have to be, um, um, mindful that it's a workable fixative so that you can still um, work over it. Not that I do, but just in case. My fixative. Then I have some you know, paper stumps. Um, I don't use them, but you never know. 
then I got these stencils and um, I actually uploaded a video um, where I used the stencil for background um, with pastels and that worked really nicely so I have these stencils to to be used as a background um, like little doves and uh, flowers and these are just you know all kinds of things it's um, this is plastic um, so you can clean them after use I really like them and I um, need to you know be more creative with them there are so many different ones really cool and then I have a small package of um, gel pens metallic gel pens these are actually the only ones that I have and use um, they're by adding um, and a seven pack all kinds of colors and um, I found that usually gel pens just you know stop working properly for me but these always are very very juicy and flow very nicely I really like them I mostly use them for for Christmas when I want to color gold or and now we're already through most of my stuff um, what's left is for me to show you what I have on my desk whenever I color. Just a small assortment of um, random things. This is my um, trusty sharpener. It's a Dala 133. And it's a mechanical sharpener where you just you pull this out and then you put the pencil in and, and you move the little handle here. Um, it sharpens the pencil and it's really um, um, good to the pencil. I, I've never had any breakage with this except for when the, um, the pencil core um, had been broken, but not just, you know, not by itself. Um, it doesn't give an extreme sharp tip. You can um, set it to how sharp you want to have it. Um, and don't I don't like having very very pointy ends because for me they just break so I have to set to medium it's my sharpener then also super important to me is um, my Durbin electric eraser because um, it's very very precise and just takes off um, the color exactly where you want them to um, I, this is actually my second because the first one the cat um, wanted to try and see how um, um, gravity worked and just you know push it off the desk and yeah I have um, this one and I have uh, lots of replacement nibs then I have a um, circle tool and rulers this is especially good if you want to do bouquet backgrounds then I have these two little um, containers they're um, bamboo and I think they're originally um, they have originally some Japanese um, dessert in um, but they're the perfect size for pencils as you can see and they're especially good if you have cats that love pencils because um, they also have a Oop. little lid so those are super good um, to protect my pencils from cats and you know rolling off the table and um, in this one are the pencils I currently use um, also a blender paper stump I don't know why so this is where I usually um, have the pencils I currently use and those are um, pencils that I um, don't even sort back because I always use them this is the Faber-Castell Polychromis Indigo this is Prismacolor Espresso Prismacolor Cream and Prismacolor White I use this to these two a lot to blend with whatever um, pencil I color whether it's Polychromis or um, Pablo's or anything else I, I often use these two um, for the final um, blending of the pigment 
the Prismacolor Espresso is wonderful for very dark shadows and the same goes for um, the Polychromous Indigo. That's why they're often in here. And then um, this other holds all kinds of things that you need um, in coloring. It holds some gel pens. Um, this is the Uniball Signo in white that a lot of people use for accents. But for me, I don't know, it stopped um, working properly. The, the, the gel doesn't want to flow, so I don't use it often. Just something to write on. Um, pencil extenders and um, lots of blenders and something to just hold pages. And then this is the last thing that is on my um, desk. It's a little pencil holder again. It has all my um, water brushes. I have a, a set of Derwent water brushes and all kinds of sizes. And this is um, a Kuritake one. And um, they're all very temperamental. I, I have to you know, switch them, switch th through them whenever I use them because one has too much water and one has too little water and then one of those always has the perfect flow. Changes from day, uh, time to day, day to day. And these are three different sizes. So this is very big and this is very tiny. And this is just a medium, medium size. Then I have a Wink of Stella, um, ink by Zig. It's just a clear, just um, very, very glitter, glittery. Then I have the two Posca pens that I own, the white one for um, accents. I have one in 1M, and this is. Um, Small. There is one smaller, but this is pretty fine for just, you know, little dots and things. And um, this is in the black one. It's bigger. I've got it. I have it for backgrounds, but I didn't. Um, this is 5M. I didn't um, think about, you know, that I, if you do the background, you also have to go around the edge of the um, picture. And for this, it's too big. I need to get a small one for the, you know, intricate lines. And then I have three Sadler fine liners in three different sizes. Up 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. Just, you know, if you have to um, redraw lines in a picture. This is um, the Koi Coloring Brush Pen Blender. Um, I haven't have haven't had good success with using it with the actual um, Koi. Um, colors, but this uh, works super nicely with um, water-activated pencils. It really just um, dissolves them so so nicely. I don't know what's in here, but it's really nice. And then I have a little brush to just you know brush away dust and just you know random other things to write with and scissors. So yeah, this has been um, all my coloring supplies, minus um, the paper that I use. But for the paper, I want to do an extra video and talk a bit more about this and you know show you um, which paper I use for printout PDFs. Um, and I don't want to just um, stuff this into, into this video. So this will be an extra video that I'll film. Um, and I also want to go through my swatch book um, that I don't know where it is. But um, this will be a separate video too. Uh, for now, um, I thank you very much for watching. Um, I have to put away all of this stuff to, you know, actually have some sort of order here. Um, the cats are very happy because they have their chair back because now the stuff is all here. That's why they stopped um, running all through the picture. And um, yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. I hope the my my cold. Um, voice uh, and, and my, my sniffling and my coughing wasn't too bad 
and um, yeah, we'll see each other in the next video. Bye!